Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to the Beth L. Music Series. Today we're going to be speaking to Giacomo Gates. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Giacomo, correct. Giacomo Gates. And he is an international world famous jazz jazz vocalist and he's going to be playing at Bethel Synagogue at a jazz concert on April the 2nd. It's a week before Passover so I think there's some sort of theme between you know jazz is free-flowing and easygoing and then the Israelites came out of Egypt and Passover. I think I've got a theme going here. What do you think? Absolutely. I agree. So my first question to you is because I'm interested. How did you ever get the name Giacomo? Giacomo Gates. Well, Where'd that come from? Giacomo was an Italian name. Right. Given to me by my parents. My but Gates is not. Gates is a very shortened version of my real name because most people can't pronounce Giacomo, never mind my last name. What's the last name? Agostini. G Agostini. Agostini. Giacomo Agostini. Right. So, but also when I knew that I would have had to change my name somewhat mm -hmm. to be accessible. Uh, Gates is, a, is an old vernacular term. Uh, there were some musicians a very long time ago who had big bands and, they, and the personnel used to change all the time. And they couldn't remember everybody's name. So if you were a swinger, they'd call you Gate because a gate swings. Aha. Uh -huh. So when you speak to someone that you don't know, this used to be, in this jazz world, you'd say, hey, Gate, what's happening? So Gates, Giacomo Gates. So you made it up? Yeah. A little bit. It's a short Augustine. version of Agostini. Uh, not quite. Sure it is. <laughs> the same letters are in there. Yeah, no, you're right. You're <laughs> right. Um, the other thing that's mentioned about you, well, first of all, you're Italian. Yeah. You're Italian. And you are very, very into the music. Like they call you a very hip cat, a very cool cat. What's hip about you? I have no idea. You don't know? I don't know. I just try to be myself. And if they can make it, solid. If not, then whatever they think of me is what, I mean, I don't know. You don't perceive yourself as hip and cool? No. No? No. Well, I, I read a little bit about you, and you were brought up uh, basically in the 60s and 70s. Sort of. That's nice. Okay. okay. I'll go with that. Sort of. Sort yeah. of. Well, you're, you, you were born in the 50s? Yeah. Born in the 50s, mm. but you were brought up in the 60s and 70s when there was a lot of music, um, a lot of Jimi Hendrix, a lot of Cream, a lot of that kind of music. Yet in your literature, it says that one of your influences was Perry Como. That's true. How does that happen? Well, I saw him on television. I was a, I was a young kid at right. home. Right. watching variety shows, because that used to be what was on television. So, yeah, Perry Como, Dean Martin, Sinatra, Lawrence Welk, that wasn't my scene, but, but I saw all of that. I was exposed to, from Perry Como to Elvis Presley. So who else were very big influencers on your music? Well, I had the good fortune of taking guitar lessons when I was eight years old. So that exposed me to music that wasn't necessarily pop music. So even though I come from a generation from the 50s and 60s, I was learning and listening to music that came out of the 30s and 40s. 
So I became aware of people like Bing Crosby. You know, I mean, my generation wasn't listening to Sinatra. Some people were, not Bing Crosby. Right, but you're... And my generation wasn't listening to Dexter Gordon, but I was. So I had the good fortune of being turned on to people that were current, Jimi Hendrix, The Doors, The Rolling Stones, and Chet Baker and Miles Davis and, and like that, and Anita did, O'Day. You did a, a record, a Miles Davis record. Yes. Uh, Miles Tones. Yes. And it was number one on the, what's that called? The National, National Jazz Playlist. National Jazz Playlist, mm -hmm. number one. And then you did another one, The Revolution. Will the, be jazz. The Revolution Will Be Jazz. The music also. of Gil Scott Heron, a whole other generation. And they did mean? very well. What does it mean to be number one? How do you, how do you, how is that assessed? I'm not sure. Not sure. Well, no, well, what it means is that I, the rate, the records or CDs, got the most jazz, got the most airplay of 250 stations in the United States for X amount of weeks. So everybody liked the record. That means everybody played it more than any other record. Um, you know, it, it gives you some recognition. Yeah. It, you know, the phone rings. Um, well, you're playing nationally now. You're yeah. playing every, But yeah. your career, it all, you started pretty late. Mm. So your career started in 1990? Professionally. Professionally. That's when I made a professional decision. How does decision. that happen? I mean, in 1990, you must have been around 40 years old. Yeah. Yep. So how does that happen? Uh, I had taken music lessons as a kid. I was interested in music. I, I had a great time with music, but I never pursued it. I sang, I played in wedding bands. When I played in wedding bands, I was a teenager. And Were you a singer or were you a well, musician? Well, I sang sometimes, but I, I didn't call myself anything. I was doing it for fun. And, you know, it was a little part-time money on the side for a young kid. And I played with guys who were probably 10 years older than me. So what changed? Why in 1990, when you were 40 years old, why did you, be, how did that happen? Like what, was there some sort of yeah. uh, moment? Like did, well, not did, a did, moment. Did you get a but vision? A, but a, 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 maybe like more like an hour than a moment. An, an hour. Yeah. A, a lot of visions. Yeah. A lot of, and what, I was living in Fairbanks, Alaska. Why? I went up there when I was 25 years old for a year. By the time I hit 38, I was still there because I liked it. I was working construction, and in between, I was in other places. I was in Lake Charles, Louisiana, working on a drill rig. I was in Washington State. I was on a road job. I was in Arizona on a road job, and I'd go back to Alaska. And I attended a summer arts festival in Fairbanks on a whim. And I took a jazz, not a jazz vocal class, a cabaret class which is a whole nother bag, but that's okay too. Cabaret as in... Uh, cabaret as in cabaret. As in cabaret. Yeah. Sort of vaudeville a little bit? Mm, yeah, kind of like over the top Over the bit. top, ridiculous, fun. No, well, there's good fun. cabaret. Fun. It's fun. A lot there of is fun. good cabaret, you know, just like anything else does. Right. And um, I, there were, you know, international instructors there. And the headliners at that time were Sarah Vaughan and Steve Allen. And they were in Fairbanks, Alaska? Yes, they were. And um, I got encouragement from several people who said to me, you know, you have your own sound. You don't sound like anyone. You're, you're singing music that is a little esoteric, but yet accessible. And one person said to me, you'll never get hurt up here. And I said, well, I'm not trying to get hurt. I live up here. And she said to me, why? Like it was just beyond her concept. Why would anybody live in Alaska? And she asked what I asked. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I, um, I was up there longer than I thought I was going to be. I knew it was time for me to do something else because I'm not the kind of person who just says, okay, this is it. I'm doing this till the lights go out. That's not who I am. And, and the lights aren't out yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we got a few more years to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Well, know? it's but not. I'm doing this. Well, I'm, you were a blue-collar guy. Yeah, I worked construction. I ran equipment. I was an operating engineer. So while you were running equipment, were you singing? For fun. Maybe I'd sit in somewhere if I, you know, if I was in town or if I was in a place. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of jazz going on in Fairbanks, Alaska. 
But, you know, I, was a, I played a harmonica, I sang for fun. So this person said to you, why are you living here? Well, so and it was inconceivable to her that a person with your kind of chops, is hello, that the word? Hello. Thank you, thank you. With your kind of chops, what were you doing driving a rig, driving yeah. construction, being a laborer? Yeah. And so that, that little conversation made a difference? Well, I had begun beginning to think that, you know, I'm, the adventure is gone, the excitement is gone, the big jobs are gone. Is this it? I want to do something else. I don't know what. And I thought, you know, I've always had a feel for this music. I'm a, I've been a fan of it. I'm still a fan of it. So why not? You know, I'm an extremist, too. I go from Fairbanks to New York City. Is that what you did? Yeah. You went to New York City. I was established in Fairbanks. I mean, I had a, I had a place to live. I had, had food. a job anytime I wanted it out of a union hall. I had, you know, a new car or truck, whatever it That's was. That's good. I was, I was safe. You were right. I was too safe. So, um, yeah, I went to New York. You went to New York, and what did you do? I mean, what is a... Sit in, hang out, meet musicians, meet other singers. So you were like establish 40, a you, repertoire. you were 40 years old about 39. That. 39 years old. Established a repertoire, learned how to do it. But I didn't make a decision to be a jazz singer. I was always involved in the music. You know, there are people who do. I'm, I sing folk, and I think I'm going to be a jazz singer, and then I think I'm going to sing opera. That's something else. I don't know nothing about that. That's not you. No. I, I have been invested in the lifestyle. So to me, it wasn't a stretch to go from Fairbanks to New York because... I fortunately was very accepted by people who, 20 years ago, I was buying their LPs. Remember LPs? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm at that. I'm in the same. Yeah. Yeah, we're and, in that and, same. And so they, you know, they accepted what I was trying to do, and they encouraged me. That's what made it happen. That they encouraged you. Yeah, that they said, you know, we we think you're valid in so many words. But you weren't earning a living doing any of this. No, I was holding up liquor stores. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> well, it's a living. It's a living. It's a living. It's exciting. Yeah, and it's not ordinary. Right. I mean, you can't talk about it for a long no, time. They start to recognize they you start after to a while. Right, right. You but it's, it's a way. So, so you're hanging out now at these places. You're not earning a living. You're not working as an opera, as a... As, as a singer, as I'm a singer. trying to get gigs. You know, you got to get, you have to have some kind of a sample to give someone to get a date in a club. So I went into a studio and I cut a cassette. And then I'd say, here, man, give this a listen. And, you know, I would get a call and I'd sing. And sometimes I, there were some places that I worked at that people that I looked up to would, would show up. Or someone would say, listen, give this cat a gig because... That makes all the difference in the world, too. That's a connection. Would you recommend this system for kids going out, coming out of school and wanting to be jazz singers? Would you recommend that system? I wouldn't discourage or encourage. You know, it's a choice. It's a choice you make. And if you want to do something, you might have to give up a whole lot to get there, and you might not make it. I mean, how, it's lucky. How, how long in this system did it take till you started to really be a jazz singer from New York? How long did that take? Oh, I don't even know. I really don't. It's a great question, but I don't have an answer for that. But you weren't doing other jobs in the meantime? You weren't I, did a th I did a few things. Besides holding up banks? Besides that. Besides that. Uh, uh, the liquor stores. Banks are federal offense. Um, you, have, you have some integrity. That's You've got right. You some morals. That's yes, right. right. Yes, I mean, I, I drove a limousine. I still worked a little construction for, for a couple of outfits. Um, I drove a school bus for a very short time because I don't have the right temperament for that. Uh, I did whatever I needed to do to make it happen. So and I would get more and more work. And then I, I was asked to teach. You were asked to teach? Yeah, because I would coach some people. This, this kind of happened. And some people said to me, listen, we have a, a, you know, a position. Would you be interested? There are students here that are interested in singing this music as opposed to voice lessons. That's a whole other thing. Well, I want to tell you something. I was listening to your music, and I'm not a music person, but I noticed that, that your music sounded conversational to me. Hello. 
Is that good? Absolutely. That's good? Yeah. It didn't sound to me like you were singing. Right. But I knew you were singing. Right. I'm I performing, but I'm telling you a story. I'm singing a song. But I could hear all the words. Right. And so I said to myself, the first thing I said to myself, this is so great. The person's well, thank talking. You. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, who but can But he's I? talking in tune. Right. Who but can I? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pick someone, whether most people are a fan of this person or not. Frank Sinatra, most people, if you ask people, what do you like about Sinatra? He's always got a great voice. That's not what gets them. Because if you ask them about Louis Armstrong, they can't say he's got a great voice. No. But he's a great singer. It's not, I mean, I like having a nice watch, voice. I like to watch Louis Armstrong. Yeah. I like when he takes out. Right. Uh, the, but the, he connects. Yes. He's telling you a story. And you believe it because it's genuine. I believe that Louis Armstrong is Louis Armstrong. Right. I don't believe he's singing a song. I believe that he's him. It's real. It's in time. Is that the principle? I think so. When Sinatra sings, he's doing the same thing, but he's got this voice that people like. So that's, you know, frosting on the cake. But to me, the connection is if it's contrived and it's, you know, how do you like me now? Mm -hmm. Not so much. I don't get it. That's not for me. So that business, when I heard your voice and I said, the guy's, say, the guy's speaking. He's not singing. He's speaking. He's having a conversation with me. I couldn't understand it. But you're saying that is the epitome of what jazz is, that honesty, that telling that story? Honesty. I That's think it. has got a lot to do with it. Also musicality. I mean, you know, the two have to go together. So what about the business with scat? Like the scat business, you know, ba 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 boo ba be ba. Am I doing it or no? You got it. I'm good. Yeah, you want to? We'll, we'll do the gig. <laughs> I can, no, I would <laughs> love to do something like that. Uh, what What is that? What? Because I'm. I hear also that uh, you know you have a reputation in scat. Scat singing is a musician's language. It's a It's a singer's way to improvise. A singer's way. To improvise. improvise. To improvise over the melody. The melody is the song. Okay? So um, you'll always hear a horn player. Miles Davis will play the melody. Then he'll play something else. Well, people think that the song is very long. The song is only a minute and a half. But they play it 17 times. So they go back to the top, the beginning, and they play over those chord changes. I don't want to get too technical. Right. But they're playing a reference to the melody over the chords that are written in the song. So you have to come up with some kind of a syllable because if you're not going to sing words, you have to be musical. So I never heard anybody sing fap, fap, a fap, app because that's not musical. No, that doesn't sound but, good. You know, booby, dooby, da. Is at least At least it rolls out. So there are, you know. So you can take any song. If I take a song, uh, what would be an easy song? Like Happy Birthday. Not yeah, good, well, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. But, my, give, yeah, give Happy Birthday is almost like rhythm changes. So, I got rhythm, I got okay. rhythm, I got music. So, it's almost like ba, Happy ba, Birthday. Ba, 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 no, I'm ba, 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 I got rhythm, da ba be do, be da ba ba, de ba ba ba. Join in any time. Join in any time. Join in any. But is th that's the principle. That's pretty so much. So it doesn't it's sound rhythmic. Like, yeah. It's supposed to be rhythmic. It's supposed to match the music, and it's supposed to be you know the the more one does it, the more it becomes a second nature. It becomes honest, as opposed to I'm just going to pick stuff out of the air. I mean, you got to start somewhere. But it doesn't sound complicated. Am I correct? No, it's complicated. It's complicated. Oh, yeah. But I could do it, sort of. No. Well, you could do it, sort of. But I mean, if you had, if you put, if you get a rhythm section over here, you really have to listen to them, uh -huh. because they're laying down the road map. You can do whatever you want to, but you have to fit. So the best singers are the best listeners. The best singers are the best listeners. That they're sounds. To the band. That sounds like somebody said that. Somebody very famous said that. Well. I'll bet some, some potent musicians also said that, because the best musicians are listening to the other musicians. We're all trying to make each other sound better, as opposed to, okay, it's my turn now. 
No, no, no. We're in this together. It's a team sport. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's an ensemble effort. So you're teaching jazz vocals. Mm. You're teaching... They have to call it something. Jazz vocals. Yeah. What should they call it? Conversational jazz? Conversational voice. Conversational voice. Or the reality of the music. I mean, I don't know. I'm, so I'm when, just... when you're listening to me and you hear my voice quality, does that tell you that I would be a good singer or no? Does that tell you anything? Uh, I think you have a very nice speaking voice. So Let's I would talk like... about me. Okay. Then I'd like <laughs> to hear you sing in your voice as opposed to... Like, if you could sound just like Ella Fitzgerald, I'm not interested. I've got her records. I want to hear you. So. And that seems to be a challenge for many people. Oh, yeah. That's the yes. hardest part. F let's find your voice. How many people are making a living sounding like Elvis Presley or Sinatra? Not many. Well, some are in Vegas. Right. That's what they do. And that's going to become outdated. You know, you've got to be you. Everybody else is taken. You gotta be you. Yeah, there you go. See, and you can carry a tune, you have a pleasant sound, and you have a, a personality that's gonna say, I'm gonna give this so up. So you could teach me how to sing. Yeah. With those, given the criteria that you mentioned. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say something very con controversial. Which I have heard people say, anybody, if you can talk, you can sing. That ain't true. Not true. I don't think so. Because you gotta carry a tune, you have to have ears. So that's an essential part of it. Yeah, I mean, I have auditions. I, I don't call them auditions. The school has auditions. I call them meetings. Mm -hmm. They say, well, you know, we have a meeting. We talk. And they say, um, well, is there an audition? Do you want an audition? Yeah. Hit a note on the piano. Say, match that. And they don't really know what to... Match that. Right, I've never heard... I've been and to if they match it, they're in. If they don't... They're not. It means they can't listen. They can't hear the note. They can't match pitch. So not every. That's a gift. Not I've ne everybody. You know, I've can never do heard that. any of this. This is fan This is fantastic. Well, for me. listen. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, that's because a problem. Because listen, listen, come. We, everybody can sing. That ain't true. Not true. Not everybody can dance. Some people dance better than others. Some people drive better than others. Some people play the piano better than others. It's an. It's a. It's an innate thing. It's a gift that you have to polish. But if you don't have the gift, it ain't, it ain't happening. happening, baby. So what about this concert you're giving at Bethel? We're going to have fun there because I have had the pleasure of playing there previously. And the audience comes to have fun. And I always try to hire some of the best musicians that I can get. And we have fun. We tell stories. We tell musical anecdotes. We refer to the music. There might be a story about one of the composers. Do you uh, know what you're playing there? I have no idea. You know, idea. you're going to get three, four, five hundred people. I've been to those concerts. You have? Yes. I have it's, no idea. I, I'm, I'm telling you. No, I mean, I have no idea what I'm going to do. You don't I mean, know what you're going to do? Not until I walk in. Well, that, what about the musicians? Don't you have to... No, it's a secret. I don't tell them anything. <laughs> you can't tell <laughs> anybody. I mean, you must have some idea. Well, I have a repertoire to choose from. So if I have a book of, let's say, I don't know, 100 tunes, they're all in alphabetical order. The piano player gets one, the bass player gets one. If I look around and I see, and it's not about, uh, 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 you know, this is what's going to happen because of who looks like what. It's a feel that you get. So I'm probably not going to do any music by the doors. So I this, don't anyway. Is this like really improvisational jazz? No, it's spontaneous. It's no, spontaneous. No. It's not improv. It's the songs are valid songs. I might see, look around and say, you know, I'll bet these people like George Gershwin, they might want to hear Lady Be Good. And that's what's going to come. Not what comes. And if that flows, the next tune might be, it's not going to be Gershwin, but it's going to be like that. Then I might change gears. I mean, I'm not going to sing everything the same. So I'm, I'd like to sing something that people recognize. I'd also like to challenge them to listen to something different. What about the business that it's right before Passover and you're in a synagogue? Does that have any impact on you at all? Or, well, you don't know right now, but intellectually, do you think it will? I, it probably has some kind of a, an effect. Yeah, I mean... Uh, you're going to be surrounded by Jews. That's Jew okay. You like that? <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay, that's I'm a good okay thing. I'm okay with that. That's a good thing. Uh, 
it's, what it's about more singing, of a vibe. What about singing a Hebrew song? Like, what about singing something like, see, I'm, I'm making your program now. Okay. I'm thinking out loud. But the only what, one I know that much of it is Hava Nagila. I was about to say, yeah. Hava, da, ba, 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 ba. Now, see, How does that? To, for me, though, that would be a little disrespectful to scat over Hava Nagila. But a little bit of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking you do the Hava Nagila, and then you scat a bit, and then you invite the audience to scat with you. Oh, uh, no, I work alone. Alone. <laughs> what happened to the team sport? Oh, no. I mean, Alone I, means I'm working with who's on the bandstand, mm -hmm. and if I'd invited somebody up, fine. But, you know, like group singing, is that's not where I'm coming from. You like from. my idea? I like my idea with well, the Havana gig. You better do your own gig. <laughs> you told me. <laughs> well, maybe we can do lessons or something. Yeah, we can work something out. What else do you want to tell me about yourself? Not much. No. Not much? <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I'm having fun. You know, and like I'm, lo I'm looking forward to April 2nd. And like I said, I've worked there before. Uh, there's always a good show, you know, a showing of people. Oh, I was told you, you're going to have three, four, five um, people. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to, um, if I'm supposed to or not supposed to mention any names, but Ms. Wagner always puts together a great program. Alyssa Wagner? Yes. Well, she's the concert producer. I she did. She does a bang up job. Yeah. Bang up job. So, um, you know, there's, they have a nice grand piano. The sound is nice. Cantor Ness? Yes. Cantor Ness, He's yes. He's got a great sense of humor, and he sings too, Yeah. obviously. He's Is he going to sing with you? I don't know. We didn't talk about that. Could happen. Could? Yeah. And what about uh, Alyssa Wagner? Is she going to sing with she, you? She's going to sing. We might sing something together. See, I like to leave it open because if it gets too planned, then it feels like, okay, next now, this is going to happen now, this is going to happen, and it becomes rigid. But open, this is like really open. You're yeah, it's open. Open, and you're a few minutes before is when you plan the show? Not even then. In Not the even middle then. of it. Come on up. Let's do it. Yeah. You, well, I'll, I'll check, though. I'd say, listen, are you comfortable with coming up? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. But you're not going to ask somebody to come up who, well, you're not going to ask someone to come up who doesn't want to come up. End of subject. Right, but I mean, I'm, I'm not going to ask someone from the audience like that I don't know. Moi? What about asking Moi? You told me I had a good voice. Well, yeah. Why not? You told me I could At least sing. We, we've had an interview already. <laughs> so, you know, that's right. We had the meeting. That's right. We had the meeting. Right. I've been talking to <laughs> Giacomo, Giacomo. Giacomo. I've been talking to Giacomo Gates, and he's going to be appearing at Beth L. Temple on April 2nd. Not clear what it, the program's going to look like, but what is clear is that you're going to have a great time. It's going to be a fantastic evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, fun. You're welcome. Fun. Lots of fun. All right.